<laughs> Wrong or right? <clears throat> announcements, announcements. Welcome everyone, glad to see everybody here. Um, announcement today is Sunday, it's November 18th. Stewardship um, Thanksgiving Sunday. 9 a.m. is the Spanish worship, 9.30 Sunday school, 10.30 Spanish Sunday school, and then 10.50 the traditional morning worship or 10.50 worship. 12 p.m. is a special called council meeting. And what that church council meeting, what that is, is we'll meet right after worship. We'll sign in and we'll say hi to everything. It's just basically improving leadership for, for the next year. The next year. Yeah, it's, really yeah. it's gonna be very fast. You don't worry, you'll be able to have plenty of food when you get here. So it's not gonna last long. And then five o'clock is charge conference or Avalon. 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 So everybody's encouraged to go. It's a lot of fun. Monday, um, two o'clock Stephen Ministry and then seven o'clock is choir practice and the Catala practice. Let's see, Thursday, the, the, the food the pantry and heavily needles. Um, it's going to be at 1.30. Okay. Wednesday is Thanksgiving Eve. Church is open. We'll be here, but there won't be anything scheduled for Wednesday night. Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. You get to eat all you want to eat. Um, and church office will be closed. I need you to keep me in your prayers. I am going to try to make a chocolate pie for I'm going to my oldest son uh, for Thanksgiving. So Wednesday night, I am going baking. to make a chocolate pie. So uh, keep me in your prayers. Saturday is no mess breakfast and no praising because we'll just be relaxing. If you want to, December the 15th, we put that on the calendar as the party here. The praise and Christmas party. Party. December the 15th. December 15th is the praise and Christmas party. Yeah, that would be good. December the 15th. Yeah, we can start advertising that for us. So we need to, yeah, I guess. Yeah. We need to get something we'll, yeah, we'll put, put it in the, the next, next newsletter. newsletter. Also, December 2nd, that week of December 2nd, that Wednesday, we'll start our. Uh, Bible study for Christmas, Advent Christmas. So, um, you've seen the article. There's a sign up sheet. I encourage you all to sign up. Plus, uh, if you haven't made a commitment, there's a red sheet in your bulletin that you'll get tomorrow that the, um, the pledge card. So, we're going to bring our pledge cards up front. Anything else? No. That's it.
Sometimes it seems like I'm coming undone. This walk can often feel lonely. No matter what, until this race is won, I will stand my ground where hope can be found. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. sister lives around Houston, so they'll be there to take care of him. He's taken care of his mom the last 30 years, he says. Now they'll take care of him the next 30 years. So that's a joy and a concern because it's starting a new life for his mom, and that is always a um, grieving time. It's a change of life, a grieving time. So let's keep uh, um, Jeff's mom in our prayer. Keep all our military people in our prayers that um, are away from home this Thanksgiving. Uh, if you ever experience being away from home during the holiday, it's not always a lot of fun. So let's keep um, 
military people in our prayers for that. Anyone else? No prayer concerns? Well, we can pray for the college students traveling. College students traveling, because this is the start of traveling. And there will be a lot of traveling this, this city, because gas is down 97. So I, I got it right before it went down. I got a 201, and then I come by here today. I got mine last night. Come by here, it's 197. So, so there will be a lot of people on the road this holiday season. We're already there. 35 is packed. This well, they, Let's keep people in our prayer, because traveling can be very stressful. And um, families stressed out too before they get to where grandma and grandpa and wherever they're going with the kids. <laughs> um, let's just keep everybody in our church in our prayers. So I know there's a lot of needs in here, but we need to just keep lifting people up. So we'll just, just pray for each other. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight that, that humble as we are, Lord, knowing that we are unable to do anything for ourselves, that we have to rely on you, that the struggles of life and the joys of life cause us to be changed in life, which sometimes is and always times it's always a grieving process and cause this uh, conflict. So, Lord, we just ask you to keep with each one of us. You heard the concerns we've lifted up, and you know who they are, what the concerns are, Lord. And, and as we gather together, two to three of us gathered, we just ask you to be with each concern and each joy that we have lifted up. And, uh, as People go forth in the night and during the day of this holiday season, knowing that we have lifted them up, that you will be there with them, Lord, and we thank you for that. We ask for um, a calmness in our um, society that um, has been prepared for you to celebrate uh, your son's birth, that uh, calmness of life comes over all people not just as Christian, but all people, that uh, the calmness that goes through the season, that they s step back and, and look at themselves and their situation and just um, realize that you are in charge, Lord, and we just ask you to bring that calmness all for each person, each one, that struggles and not struggles. We ask you to be with our church and worships and, and all the things we have going on tomorrow, especially our charge conference, that we uh, that the charge conference goes smoothly and, and that everything is um, lifted up for the church, Lord. Um, we have made a lot of accomplishments this year, and but there's still more to be done for your kingdom. And we ask you to be with us during that, that development of that. Lord, and we thank you, Lord you are here with us. We ask you to be with our Sunday school classes, um, our youth groups, our children's programs, all the activities that we will, we will be preparing to um, do this uh, holiday season. And we know, Lord, as we two or three of us are uh, gathered together, that we lift this up to you and you, you will be here with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. And we ask all these things and thank you. Lord, for allowing us to serve you today. In Christ's name. Amen. So, the scripture of the day is, comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 14, and we're going to skip to 19 and 25. So, this is the ESV. Scripture. So hear the scripture of the Lord. And every priest stands daily at his service, offers repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all times a single sacrifice for sins, 
he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from the time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtains, and that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast that the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encourage one another in all the more as you see the day drawing near. So when we look at this, we look at the first part. What is the contrast between verses 11 and 12? Because it seems to me it's pretty important. The NLVS says, And every priest stands day by day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. And then 12 comes back and says, But! When Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice of sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Think about that. Man, since man can't get forgiveness done for the sins because we continue to sin. And we have to keep on doing the same thing. So a priest has to stand up there. It reminds me of every Sunday, Raul stands in front of us and preaches to us a message of God's. And then we go out during the week and repeat the same sins we did previous week. It's like we lose our hearing on Sundays, and all of a sudden Mondays we gain it back so we can hear all the stuff. There's a, there's a reason why we encourage people to come to worship every week. You shouldn't be missing worship because you have to come to worship every day. Because we have to be reminded every week of what Christ has done for us. In Hebrew, the language is very simple. The priest sacrifices for the sins of the people. And so they continue to, to stand. It reminds me of when I was a teenager, I worked in a driving. And from the time I got there, till usually it was two shows. By the time I got done clean, helping clean it up and leaving, I was always on my feet, right? Can you relate? Some of you, you relate to that. You're always on your feet. You don't get a chance to sit down. It's always on the feet. Kind of toss them in there. Get a little world out. So, Nothing is accomplished by the priest. Not because the priest is not faithful and wants to do something for the people. It's because we do not ever learn the lessons God 
Bible scholar teaches. But here comes Christ. We talked about this last week. Christ came. He spent three years ministering to us, teaching us about our sin, teaching us about the forgiveness of sin, teaching us what we meant to the Father in heaven. And then the time came. Then the time came. What we call Easter. Three days before that, Christ died. He was the sacrifice. The blood of Christ was a sacrifice for our sins. And when we think about that, why is the priest still standing in Christ in verse 12? Sacrifice for our sins, and then he sits down at the right hand of the Father. He does that because the sacrifice is done. Christ is, did the sacrifice. Not just for the present sins, the past sins, but also for the future sins. He has made that sacrifice. His job is done. And it's now left up to us. Do we accept His sacrifice? And each week we come to church, and that's why we should be coming to church every worship service on Sundays. Because this is a celebration every Sunday. We spend six days getting ourselves in all kinds of trouble, living our lives. We should at least be able to come Sunday morning and spend an hour and a half in church to celebrate what Jesus did for us. It took care of all our sins. Celebration. Because his job is done. So he gets to sit on the right hand side of the Father in heaven for his single sacrifice that took care of all our sins. And since then, we are waiting to tell his enemies. He's sitting there waiting for his enemies, the footstool for his feet, so he can rest his feet. He had been on his feet. He had sacrificed for us. go on. They are standing because the work isn't finished. Jesus is sitting because his work is finished. Verse 13, we're waiting for that time onward until his enemies are made first to move for his feet. You think that is it's kind of uh, hard to understand. And basically what it is, is Jesus is waiting for the right time to come again to establish his earthly kingdom when all of his enemies will be forced to bow down before him and confess that he is the Messiah. And what we call that is the second coming. He is waiting for that time when we are ready to bow down. Even his enemies are ready to bow down to his authority as Jesus Christ. So that's verse 13, sometimes confusing, but that is um, basically what it is. Although he sacrificed himself, is complete, he is, he is not done. Jesus still has a lot to say and do about world history. 
our history books tell us about many of the great empires and civilizations that the world has in world history that have rise and fell. We learn that the power of the ancient Roman and the splendor of Babylon and the wisdom of the Greeks, the influence of Egypt and the creativity of the Chinese, do you know that there is one empire that is coming that is going to pull all of the rest to the same empire, splendor, wisdom, peace, and might, and that is Jesus' kingdom. Think about that. When all these empires have ceased to exist. The one main kingdom that's going to be left is Jesus. And that's what the scriptures talk about, waiting for that time. And think about it. How can we better allow God's law to be on our minds and heart? Is there anything we can do to make this process easier? Is there anything we can do to make this process easier? You see what he's waiting for. And we, we think about what does that mean? What does that mean? Think about what you are called to do. Think about what you are called to do. You're not called to come here on Sunday morning and listen to Raoul how we can be better to each other or better to live our lives better. Raoul called as a shepherd. He's, he's called to help us, teach us, so we'll learn that it doesn't count on Sunday morning. We're required to be here Sunday morning. We have no excuses. There's no good excuse to be gone Sunday morning. We are required, some of us, instead of Sunday morning, we come on Saturday night. That's, I'm, I'm relating that's the same thing, Saturday nights, where we come worship once a week. But the requirement for us is when we walk out the door. What is the requirement when we walk out the door? Why are we here? What is our purpose at Western Hills United Methodist Church? Make disciples. Make disciples. In fact, we, we say it in our birthday. The purpose at Western Hills United Methodist Church is to continue, continue the ministry of Jesus Christ by making disciples through faith, hope, and love. We are required to be here for worship every week. That's for us. That's to equip us to go forth and fulfill the purpose of Jesus Christ, which is to make disciples through faith, hope, and love. So when I ask you the question, what does he want us to accomplish? First, first, last, and always, make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the Hebrew portion of it. And then we go on, and we go to verses 19. And we look at that, and I can tell you these verses are give a concise summary of the main parts, points that have been taught through all these chapters in Hebrew. And we didn't go through all the chapters, but we covered most of it this month, the Hebrews, uh, one way or another. And the main points, there's four main points in the Hebrew, book of Hebrews. Point one. This is verses 19 through 25, if you, if you remember. Point one. 
we can enter the holy place. When we say enter the holy place by the blood of Christ, what we're saying is because of the blood of Christ, God is present with us right now. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, shed his blood, we now can have say that God is present with us right now. We don't have to have a special place with curtains that only the high priests can go behind. The hour Jesus died, that veil was split down the middle for the indication that we, each one of us by name, have the presence of God with us. We don't have to go through a high priest to forgive our sins. We go directly to the forgiver. Not second-handed, but first-handed. Point two. This has given us a new covenant with God. We now have a covenant that we have a personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. We don't go through priests. We don't go through secondary ways. We go directly to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ becomes our advocate. Jesus Christ is the one that says, God Father, guess what? Terry, I know he, he sinned, but he really, really wants to be forgiven. He's an advocate for me as much as he's an advocate for you all, each one of us. Three, because of the Torah veil through Jesus' sacrifice, his own body, we don't get what we deserve. We are now covered with Jesus' blood. We don't get what we really deserve as sinners, as people who don't want to follow what God the Father wants us to follow. And the last one for Instead of having the human priests to go through to make our sacrifice for us as we bring our pigeons and whatever we bring for sacrifice, we have the great high priest, the one and only, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings as our advocate. We do not need another sacrifice. He did all the sacrification we need to get the forgiveness we mercifully get from God the Father. But we are supposed to do based on all the things we have learned in a few chapters that what the next few verses tell us is these verses get to the application what we have been learning. So let's read them one more time. 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers, and I would say sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Christ, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, here's what, here's us, this is for you, this is you. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean 
from the evil conscious in our bodies, washed with pure water. We have full assurance of faith that the blood Jesus shed for us on the cross, that little baby that will be celebrating birth up pretty soon, that little baby who gave his life for just us, for each one of us, that we can be confident that we are on the right trail confession that we make when we are born, our parents make for us, most of us, but sometimes we make it as an adult. And when we confirm our teenagers, they then also make that profession of faith, we call it. That that is enough. God to forgive us. Let us consider how one another to love in good works, not collecting to be together as the habits of some, but encouraging one another and all the more to see the day drawing near. We come together once a week for worship to celebrate what Christ has done, but also to celebrate the closeness we have with God the Father in heaven. To celebrate that, that we are his children. And he gave everything for us through Jesus Christ. So enter, enter the sanctuary, not by habit, not because mom and dad taught you to do this, or not because you feel obligated to someone in this congregation, but enter this place in celebration of God's love for you, each one of us. In that celebration because Jesus has already paid your price. So come forth Saturday nights, Sunday mornings, or both to celebrate the love that Jesus has for each one of us. Amen. This is our invitation. Uh, right. My invitation is very simple. It's all of us are church people. And, uh, remember, you have a church of faith. Even when your lives are going badly, even when your lives are not the way you plan them to be, God is still there with you. God is still looking over. And all he asks is your presence. Because if we're not here, he can't be with us. So God's presence is always with you. But you feel it more closely when you're here. So if you're able to stand, stand. We'll finish with our closing hymn.
empty claims I've heard upon this earth Speaks righteousness for me It stands in my defense Jesus in your